Hello everybody, Andrew Hutchings here, and this is about how I work out now versus how I worked out when I was younger. And I, I'm just not in the video making mood, but I gotta do it. When I was younger, I lifted about the same weight as I did now, as I, as I do now. But there's a big difference. Um, how much I had to push myself how much I had to push my body. What I mean by that is, like when I was younger, I was like 150 something pounds. Well, I mean, my weight changed, but let's take when I was 154 pounds, for example, and I could bench like 255 for 11 reps. I was using the hundreds, maybe 110 pound dumbbells, I can't remember for sure, did like 12 reps of them. And there would be guys that were way bigger than me, taller and heavier, probably at least 200 pounds, if not more, uh, big guys, and they would be doing the same amount of weight. Uh, and I, I always notice that. I, I always was thinking, like, how weak they are and stuff. And some of them were just genuinely weak. But, you know, some people, uh, like myself now, you lift weights, but someone else can lift them, it's not the same as you because you can lift them with very little stress on your body. Like if I go and I, I bench press 225 pounds for 17 reps now, it's super easy. But probably if I were to do that when I was 16, I say probably because I didn't ever do 17 reps of 225, I stopped at like 12 reps and then I increased the weight. But I would have really had to push my body, and it puts a lot more strain on the body. So like, yeah, sure, I could press the 110 pound dumbbells, but I had to really force my body to give everything it had to do it. Meanwhile, someone bigger, they can just do it, and it's not gonna really wear down their joints and stuff. And that's probably the, the weakest factor is your joints. So yeah, you can crank, uh, crank out those reps, but you really shouldn't. So now, for the most part, I don't lift any heavier weights. It's just I lift them with less stress on my body. I focus the stress on the muscle, but I want as little joint and other stuff as possible. I hope this makes sense because real two people can lift the same weight. They can even think that they only have the capacity to lift the same weight. Like when I was younger, probably <clears throat> why I can lift such heavier weights than everybody else is I simply realized, like, you know, I can do that and I'm gonna do that. That was my mentality. Like, I'm gonna do that. I decided, now I'm gonna do it. Um, whereas other people who oh, this is kind of heavy, I'm not going to do it. Uh, whereas I'm like, you know, this is pretty heavy, but I know it's biologically possible for me to do it. It's going to move. Uh, yeah, some people just know how to use their strength more than others, but it's not necessarily a good thing. Like, it, it's good, of course, but you don't want to be going into the gym overexerting yourself every time. So I guess this kind of relates to ego lifting. Lift what is healthy for you to lift. If you gotta lift really heavy once in a while, go really heavy, but probably not a good idea to try one rep max. Uh, Cause there's a good chance that if your muscles can barely handle it, that your tendons and ligaments can't handle it. Or perhaps it can, but just if you do it a couple more times, then they fall apart. <coughs> So yeah, I, uh, for some things, I even lift less weight now. When I was 16, I'd be curling 55 pounds. I don't think I got to the 60s. Like, I could have... I could have curled them. I just didn't. Like, I, I got injured before I felt it was appropriate to move up to 60. But yeah, I would do the 55-pound yeah, dumbbells. Nowadays, I think I use, it's kilos here, plus I don't even look at the weight, it's just, this one feels good, I use this one. <laughs> I think they're 30 pounds. 
but I don't know. I, I know they're not 55 pounds, that's for sure. And I know that 20 pounds is pretty light, like it's not. So I think I'm using like 30 pounders. I do sometimes 10, but generally 12 to 14 reps. And that's all. I don't try to push myself and do 55 pounders or get up to 70 pounders or 80 pounders. 30 pounds is plenty. Um, yeah, you just have to know how to work your muscles. And also, currently, I do much less volume than I used to. I didn't always do a ton of volume, but I got, eventually I got into this trend of just going crazy with volume. I think it started due to a time constraint where I could only work out like two days a week. I don't remember for sure, but I know there was some sort of time constraint. So I was like, well, I can just do a ton on this day and a ton on this day. And I'm just going to stop it here. I'm tired, not feeling like making videos. You got the point. You can lift the same weight. Uh, just, it can be much more burden on your body versus much less burden. Better to go with the less burden and just get your muscles rather than your tendons and joints and everything. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, Check out my other videos, check out my Instagram, natural underscore true underscore fitness. Check out my book on tendonitis, a systematic guide to feeding tendonitis. I recommend you get the fastest shipping and get it ASAP. I would kind of fat. Luckily, I'm not obese. I have gained some weight. But that will be coming off soon enough. And if you want that to come off you, you should check out my website. Well, you don't really actually have to go on my website. You can always just message me on Instagram. But andrewhutchings.org, where you can hire me for consultations on training, diet, supplements. No medical advice, because I'm not licensed to give it. But I don't need to be licensed to give you medical information. The only difference is I don't tell you to do it. You decide if you want to do it or not. You know what's funny about medicine and stuff is how much bullshit that there is. Like, ooh, alcohol's horrible for you. These foods are horrible for you. That's bad. This is good for that. Blah, 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 blah. I recently got my blood work taken again after my bodybuilding competition. Now, obviously, lack of calorie restriction helps a ton. Um, but now that I'm drinking, you know, two, three beers a day, a lot more on some days, eating just whatever I want, pretty much all my biomarkers improved. Now, there are some catches to that, but you can find out more about this in my coming video once I get my dihydrotestosterone results, because I want them all to be in the same video. As I should study anatomy, because we did not finish anatomy class, I gotta do anatomy of the brain now, and then take a final exam. And, uh, gotta do surgical practice stuff. Uh, today, uh, we looked at some patients, and very sad. It's gonna sound funny, but very sad. Like, one woman was completely missing her butt because she had been in the hospital bed so long that she got a giant bed sore and then infection and it's like, they roll her over and it's like, fuck. Uh, it's not that it like grossed me out or anything. I, the reason that I was thinking like, fuck, is because that's a big fucking gaping hole in her of open exposed skin. Also she had it on her legs and stuff. Um, Funny how I was tired of making the video and now I'm talking more about other stuff. Um, but yeah, and I was thinking, like, you know, she may never recover from this. And all the, this this woman and the other people in there, they're all like, uh, uh, 
I don't know if it's because they've got them on a lot of medications. I asked what medications they were on in the it's surgery department, so I guess they don't pay attention. And probably they just have a lot of patients they don't remember. Um, I don't want to be in that situation. Actually, I would not, not that it's the cure-all, be-all, fix-all, whatever the saying is, but I would certainly like to be given anabolic steroids, human growth hormone, and everything I can, insulin, everything I can possibly be given to improve my rate of healing because, well, even before you get the bed sores, because injuries are just a factor of how much your rate of healing versus the rate of getting worse. Rate of getting worse is worse, you're gonna get worse and worse and worse. Rate of healing is better, you're gonna get better, 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 not worse. Um, well, certainly after you develop those open wounds, you want to really jack up the rate of healing because the longer they're not healed, the worse the outcome is. And uh, I think it's a mistake that they don't do it for all the patients. Like I asked the head surgeon, like, well, you ever give them steroids? Actually, I didn't say steroids. They like just saying steroids. I said, did you ever give them anabolic steroids? I knew I had to say anabolic because all doctors say the same thing anytime I mention anabolic steroids to them. And nowadays, I always make sure to say anabolic steroids. But they go, steroids aren't anabolic. <sighs> they don't help healing. And I'm like, yeah, they do. I'm not talking about corticosteroids. Anabolic steroids. Testosterone. Um, and then they come around, like today the head surgeon, oh yeah, and we, for burn patients we do that because you know they have a hyper-stimulated state. It's like, well, you don't need to only give it to the burn patients, you can give it to all the, not all the patients, but all the ones that have big gaping holes in their body that are gonna die because they're not gonna heal. And she's telling me, oh yeah, it's good enough, you give them proper diet and stuff. You really think this old woman who's like 100 pounds overweight uh, in a hospital bed with a gigantic hole where her butt's supposed to be and big old holes in her legs and arms and st you really think, oh, you just give her the proper diet and she's gonna get better. Like, no, she's probably gonna die. It's one thing to have like some little bed sores or... Uh, I, <laughs> it's another thing if you're missing your whole fucking butt and you got big old holes all over. I know they're trying to help her, like they're dressing the wounds. When the tissue becomes like really soft, they cut it out. Um, Cause that can spread infection. Um, yeah, there's just so much stuff they don't do in medicine nowadays that they should do. Like they should really pump you full of everything that can make you heal. Cause guess what? You don't get infected if you're healed. Of course, like you could, you could, if you heal fast enough, you could literally heal over the infection. Then you got an internal infection. Still better than having a big old gaping hole in you. I mean, this hole was like, I mean, she, she was incredibly overweight, so I mean, it had the ability, I don't know, really big. It didn't look good either, but yeah, it's not like I was gonna throw up or something. Uh, I say that because the woman, the head surgeon, who's a woman, like, oh, if you have to throw up, there's a bucket right there. Nope, but just feeling bad for her that probably gonna die. I'm a realist. You know, someone's probably gonna die. It's, it's sad. I feel bad for them. It's sad, but I'm not gonna go, oh, yeah, they're probably gonna make it. Yeah, we're gonna. No, we're probably gonna die. I hope she doesn't die. She's probably gonna die. And I really wonder, like, what's up with these. So, also, it was a post COVID ward. So it's people that had COVID, then they got other problems like strokes and stuff. So maybe that's why she, uh, um, yeah. By the way, I'm not making fun of her. It's called a reenactment. People are too sensitive nowadays. I, I bet if I did that back in California, people, yeah, you're making, no, I'm not making fun of them. It's called a reenactment. So you understand what they actually look like. Um, yeah, you don't want to get in these situations. Also a good reason not to be obese. Why we should promote not being obese. 
it's a lot easier to move people around when they're in the hospital, when they're not 150 kilos. I don't know exactly how heavy she was. Pretty much all the people were obese. Interesting, isn't it, that people who are obese happen to get a bunch of complications from COVID. That reminds me, oh, funny, I'm starting to get more energy for a video, but I need to make a video that's actually an interesting one called uh, Food Addiction versus Drug Addiction. Or maybe I would title it like, um, I had a cool name. Coca-Cola versus cocaine, which is worse for you? Because like the sugar in Coca-Cola or the cocaine in cocaine. Tune in next time. Please like, subscribe, and comment.